this is one of the best MMA examples of leg locks not working. This is not to say that leg locks don't work in the sport, but when you don't have it in the first time, you have to let it go. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about Gary Tonin, one of the best no-gi Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists in the world. He's a leg locking reaper, made a whole career off of it. Gary Tonin won bronze in the ADCC World Championship. He was a multiple time medalist in the World No-Gi Jiu-Jitsu Championship, beating the likes of ADCC World Champion Davi Hamosh, multiple time gold medalist in the ADCC North America Championship in Wagner Rocha, being Shenya Aoki, Vinny Magalayish, Gilbert Burns, and the names go on and on. He has submitted some of these guys as well. And Gary Tones had a lot of success in MMA so far, undefeated in the sport 5-0, and and they put him up against Tan Lee, who's a striker. Not much grappling in his arsenal, so it was a classic striker versus grappler matchup. And Tan Lee's been doing pretty well so far. He's a knockout artist known for his traditional martial arts. Specifically, he's a fifth degree black belt in Taekwondo, which is a striking art that most people don't believe is effective in MMA. And the fight hit the mat right away. And you have to think that Gary Tonin is going to have a major advantage once it hits the mat. Man, did it not go his way. He attempted to get the leg lock for 27 seconds straight and never was able to get it. While Tan Lee was landing concussive ground and pound, and Tonin was not letting it up. He was not trying to let go of that leg lock, even though he was getting hammered in the face. And why was that? Why did Gary Tonin hold on to that leg lock? It's because the confidence he has in it. He submitted so many guys with the same technique, much better grapplers than a brown belt in Tan Lee, yet it wasn't working. In Gary Tonin's head, he must have thought that he, no matter how many shots he's going to take here, He's eventually going to have to submit someone like Tan Lee, of course, right? It's Tan Lee. He's a Taekwondo guy. And the fact it was taking so long for him, there had to have been a bit of a frustration to Gary Tonin as he's not used to getting this kind of leg lock and opponents not tapping out to it. It's like the signature technique that you have that you beat everybody with in a video game. But there's that one guy you're going up against and that technique is not working. Now, this actually goes kind of against what Bruce Lee said, right? Bruce Lee said that he fears the man who has trained one kick a thousand times rather than someone who has trained a thousand kicks one time when that one technique doesn't work you have nothing else to go to that's not to say that Gary Tone doesn't have anything else of course he does but this is the kind of technique he has so much confidence in and especially in the world of MMA where it's uncertain of what's going to happen he's going to go to the thing he's most comfortable with that leg lock and Tan Lee's defense was pretty standard pulling away on the grip trying to break the legs open and punch this guy in the face when you punch a black belt in the face they turn into a brown belt when you punch him again, they turn into a purple belt. And that's what was happening gradually as the fight was going on. And it led to that devastating knockout blow he was able to deliver 56 seconds into the first round. Gary Tonin should not have went for that kick in the first place. That's why this whole thing went to the ground. Because he threw a telegraph kick without really setting it up. And he's pretty much going into Tan Lee's world by doing this. You're never going to catch someone like Tan Lee throwing a kick like this. Because the telegraph was by two motions. It wasn't one smooth transition through the kick. He stepped and leaned to the side before he threw it, kind of like a Muay Thai fighter. And Tan Lee is so quick, he's able to see this coming from a mile away, catches onto it, and by throwing these shots, Gary Tonin decides to pull guard, which is actually something that a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists should do. If they find themselves in a bit of a predicament on the feet, and they're not as confident to stand with someone like Tan Lee, of course pull guard. But the issue, again, was that he went for the leg lock for way too long. Leg locks in MMA, if it fails the first time you commit, let go of it, go to something else, secure position. Position before submission is always the key to victory. And that's even something that Charles Oliveira, one of the best fighters in the world, has figured out later in his career. Before, he was a wild man on the ground, going for all different kinds of submissions. And because of that, he was getting submitted by guys he should not have gotten submitted by. He was getting beaten on the ground by strikers, and then he figured out position slow rolling before going for the wild submissions and he has so much success now his ground game has hit another level this is something that maybe Gary Tonin is going to learn in the future because he is still kind of young in MMA that was only his sixth professional fight and he fought the champion at one and Tom Lee is a legit threat and ultimately that outcome was shocking to see it just showed a clear difference in experience between the two guys Tom Lee is a champion he's fought high level competition and he's been training at MMA for a while. As for Gary Tony, he kind of just got into this. He was a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy that goes for the same kind of techniques in MMA that he did in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But you gotta change things up. There are some techniques that are just not going to work the same way. Floyd Mayweather is not going to be able to box in MMA like he does in the sport of boxing. 
Jordan Burroughs is not going to be able to wrestle in MMA like he does in amateur wrestling. Gary Tonin is not going to be able to use his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in MMA like he does in the sport of BJJ. That's something that Chill Sonnen said before, right? Chill said, coming from wrestling, most of the stuff he learned in amateur wrestling, he had to throw away and he had to stick to the basics more because that other stuff is just going to get him caught. And he knew that going into the sport, Gary Tonin seems to not have done that. Gary Tonin most likely believed that him going to MMA, he gets anybody on the ground, he's going to submit them especially Taekwondo fighter Tan Lee. So that was a fantastic victory for Tan Lee, man. Something he really needed. And he, I won't say derailed the hype train necessarily. I mean, there was a lot of hype on Gary Tonin, but Gary Tonin fought the champ, right? He went pretty far to get this opportunity, but ultimately gets knocked out in 56 seconds. That's not a good way to lose, especially with your main technique getting thwarted completely. This was my most anticipated one fight. I've always known Tan Lee is a monster and Gary Tonin going into MMA I really wonder how he can do against this level of competition. The fact that it ended so eruply like that. One has some really good fights meant to look forward to. And also, John Lineker's fight was insane as well, going to the body and then to the head afterward. I mean, really conditioned Bibiano Fernandez. The classic going to the body opens up the head, and also the counter shot from Bibiano is going to aim lower because of Lineker's level change. Just fantastic fights over there at one. Really looking forward to more, and podcast coming up next. I'll see you guys there.